So I think I found the uh, source of my exhaust leak. Thought the header was just getting loose again, but it's a little worse than that. You see that up there? On that pipe that goes to number six? Let's just spray it all. Look at that, dude. If I'm seeing that correctly, that pipe is cracked all the way through. What on earth? Are you messing with me? What the hell? That is incredible. That's a load of shit. Oh, more eBay crap. Get what you fucking pay for, huh? That sucks. I guess cranking down the bolts, I gotta fix that one, huh? Oh man, oh man, I freaking hate Jeeps. Oh, you know, we just got a little leak here. Let's fix that leak. Oh, there's another leak. Oh, there's another leak. Oh, that's cracked. That's broken. That's falling apart. Fuck you. God damn. It's almost worth it to just leave them fucking fall apart on you. You'll never fix the damn thing. Only delay the inevitable. So, we're going to pull the intake off, pull the exhaust off, see if we can drill that crack on both ends and fill it with a bunch of weld. And if that doesn't work, well, then I guess we'll have to get a new one. All right. Um, uh, i got to remove the wiring. I don't really want to fuck with the fuel lines if I don't have to. Maybe I can just pick up the intake and set it to the side. Fuck, man. There's so much shit we got to take apart. I don't feel like showing you that. I've showed you that a billion times. I'll just show you how I fix the exhaust. So what the hell is that snorkel doing anyway? They got gigantic like chunks of like dirt and mud and stuff in here. What the hell? I should have seen the air filter completely just chock full of like just dust and stuff. I know it's not completely watertight, but like, come on. What the hell is this? Really? Christ. Note to self, the zip tie line goes on the back. Okay, so I have no idea how the heck I got to these impossible bolts last time. There are two bolts on the uh, bottom side that I just, I don't get it. The only way I could possibly get to them is underneath with two wrenches duct taped together to hold them in place. But it's just like, really? The one is there. That little circle's at. And then the other one is, uh, let's see if I can get you here. Where are we at? Uh... Right, right there. Okay. And the freaking exhaust tube is like literally right behind it. I have no idea how the heck I got to this before. Absolutely no idea. I got two wrenches taped together. Oh, fuck. There goes a bolt. I gotta reach my hand way the hell up in here to use these freaking wrenches. And I only got a little narrow window to see what the heck I'm doing here. As I sit here and take this off from down here and barely have enough room to move these. This is hell. This is absolute hell. I have no idea how I did this. Oh, fuck this, man. Alright, so now intake lifts right up. You just got a couple pegs that it indexes on. So you gotta take the bolts all the way out, but then you can pull her. So now you can see what the heck we're trying to get to. So, alright, this one looks like we can get over here, so we had to go right more, and this one we could get going left. But again, this is the kind of shit that you can't really see with a fucking intake in the way, and all this other bullshit. Lovely. So we can see that the crack is not on the top, so we might have a chance of actually uh, putting that back together. I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess we just got a couple more bolts, and then the uh, header can come out. We can actually get to fixing the stupid thing. God. So let's pay attention. Do we see any exhaust leaks on the... I don't really see much on the, uh, the gasket, so I guess that's good. Cool. Okay, so stupid fucking exhaust manifold's out. Dude, this thing is destroyed. We got a gigantic fucking crack all the way across this rear thing. Of course, the fucking sun's not working with me. Big crack all the way back there. The... 
Here's the tube number six crack. So you can see that that thing's all the way along the bottom there. All the way up there. Hey, you fuck. Focus. Focus. And we also have splits on the, uh, the fourth pipe over there. Got to split all the way around there. Starts to go into where they all meet together in that little triangulated fucking bullshit. You can see it comes around over here, up to that and around. Dude, that's so much. There's even a little bit up here. Like, this thing is destroyed. Fucking cracks for days. I was confident. I was, you know, kind of confident if, if you know, that, that rear tube was the only issue, but... Dude, this thing's got shit everywhere. And especially in the parts where they all meet together. I don't really know how well I'd do. So, do I throw it all back together again? Knowing that there are going to be little cracks and just say fuck it? Let me get a new one. I don't think I'd go eBay this time. Because you can see where that fucking gets you. Pissed off a year later. God, this thing is so bad. You know what we say around here, eh? Fuck off, piece of shit. Alright, well it looks like this is going to take a different turn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we're going big, because we're already home. So, yeah, here is our Banks Revolver Torque Tube um, header. This is the real deal, buddy. This thing was like a little under $400 off Amazon. So, uh... Yeah, <laughs> I figure, you know, all the eBay stuff just burns out and dies, so whatever. A little pricey, but if it lasts, I guess it's worth it, so let's take a look. Alright, so inside we got nice foam packaging, look at that, huh? Quality. So, didn't even poke through. Nice packaging. Alright. We got some instructions and all kinds of good stuff, so I'm going to gasket. See if we can wiggle that out. Okay. Well, here's the two side by side, sort of, kind of. So you can see the, uh, just the differences in the collector design and everything. I noticed this has a lip for that, that gasket to sit on, and this one doesn't, so hopefully um, it sits in there. But this thing is welded inside and out for all the joints, so they should stay together. I don't know if you can see that, but you can actually see the, uh, one of them tubes sticks out a lot more than the other. Interesting. So that's what's inside the header, if you've ever been curious. Nifty. And same on the inside. That's also got welds all around, so not bad. A little schmoo inside there. But uh, besides that, not bad. Okay, so I guess now we just put it on. Not a whole lot to figure out here. In the kit, it came with a, a new gasket, and we also have some anti seize lubricant, our little uh, little Banks gasket thingy. Oh, that's got a metal sleeve in that instead. Interesting. Also got some hardware to uh, bolt it. So yeah. Shouldn't be too difficult, as long as uh, this thing's built well, which I assume it is. Should just bolt right up and we'd be uh, good to go. Alright, well, she fits in there, so that's good. It looks like it should bolt up to the collector. Um, now, like I said, my exhaust is two and a half inch for the stroker, so it's going to look a little wide. So hopefully the, uh, the donut still seals and everything, but I think we should be okay. Looks like nice fit, but... So, uh, yeah, the only thing you have to worry about here is just making sure that when the exhaust is on that the intake fits on and sits flat. With the uh, eBay header I had, I think it was uh, cylinder 6 that the intake manifold was sitting on it and it wouldn't seal. If, if the intake does not properly sit against your head when you go to start this thing up, you're, you're going to idle it like three grand. So it's extremely important that you don't have any intake leaks. So just make sure that your test fit and everything actually, you know, fits on there properly. And uh, you're good to go. Not a whole lot to it. So I guess we'll take the duct tape off and uh, put the new gasket on. 
Okay, so last time when I did the gasket, I put on that copper um, spray gasket stuff. And it seems like it held on pretty well. So it just, it just comes right off, which is nice. Not a big deal. So no problems there. I'll probably use it again because I've had pretty good luck with it. It seems like it, it does help seal when you have stuff that doesn't uh, want to stay where it should. So... Make sure it's nice and clean before we put a new gasket on. So here's the gasket that they have. And it's actually directional. So if you notice it says torque tube this side. And the other side's just full. So you put it on like so. Beautiful. Looking good, eh? Seems like everything matches up quite well. I'm happy with that. Cool. And I think just for a little extra level, uh, spray that copper stuff on. Don't see how it can hurt. Okay, so I just have the upper exhaust bolt tightened down a little bit just to hold it against the, uh, the head. And you take your intake and you hold it up. Seems like it's good. And try to rock it back and forth as you're putting pressure on it. And I don't feel any contact issues at all there's tons of clearance in there that is beautiful excellent all right that's a sign of a good product when it fits and there's room all right cool so here's that copper uh, spray gasket stuff if you ever seen this high temp sealant improves heat transfer not that it's really necessary but I've, I've used it the past couple times and it seems like it does help seal a little more. So, uh, yeah, just give a little spritz on both sides and then torque it down. Not necessary. Not necessary, but it might help prevent, uh, you know, blowing out gaskets because I can't count how many times that six cylinder or even that first cylinder blew out with that stupid eBay header. Because when it heats up, it warps and then you got to crank the bolts down some more. It's just, uh, what a freaking nightmare that is. So yeah, I'd rather uh, not want to touch this system ever again. Okay, so in case you weren't sure how to uh, own a header, there's an owner's manual for that. The nice thing is that they do have a torquing sequence in here, so everyone likes pretty pictures. So you can see the order in which you torque. Although this number 7 bolt's a real pain in the dick, so I don't know. I'd be really tempted to tighten that, that one down first, just so you know you can actually get a good tight tighten onto it. So... Yeah, so that's pretty simple. Anti-seize on the, uh, the intake and exhaust bolts. And I'm definitely going to put a look anti-seize on these guys because exhaust is just miserable to work on for hardware. It always just rusts and all kinds of terrible stuff with all them heat cycles. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of that goodness, although i got a big jar of it. It's always good to have that stuff on hand. So the cool thing with this uh, exhaust donut that they provide you is it's got a, a metal insert on the inside, a metal ring. So that'll actually hold the uh, the gasket in place because the gasket will separate from that um, if you, you need to pry on it with a flathead or something. But just tap this little metal piece in with a hammer real lightly, and she'll seat and stay on there, which is cool. So you don't have to mess around trying to juggle that while you're trying to install the rest. I always like when things are easy to install. People were bitching at me, and I mean absolutely bitching at me about that long arm install because I was getting angry at the. Uh, the bolts because you know you need a jack and all that crap it's listen there could be a better way to do it get over yourselves christ babies okay so they're not real specific about this they just say to wait 30 seconds between coats and uh you can pre-coat for convenience so make sure there's no foolish on there make sure she's nice and clean oil and i just give her a nice light coat nothing crazy Bastard's clogged. Cool. <laughs> A plus. Oh, you bastard. Alright, not bad. I feel I really like that copper color. Probably gonna have to pull the uh, valve cover and clean that up because I know it's a oil leak there too. Alright, so now that that's on, slap this guy on and then we can actually put the nuts in. Uh, I'm probably going to at least loosely tighten up the, uh, the collector uh, while the intake's out just because it's going to be a lot easier to get to. Then we can slap the intake on and torque it down. 
Not quite Febreze, but it's still the bee's knees. Try Nicolani C's. Oh yeah. Well, I guess we should clean it off, huh? The only thing I'm worried about is the TPS sensor. I really don't like getting those wet. They die so easily. But I got some of this uh, cleaner degreaser stuff right here. Formula 88. So I guess we'll give it a little spritz, let it sit for five minutes, and see if we can't get some of the grime off at least. I'll make it look a little pretty for you guys. Anyways, words punk. Huh? Huh? Not the worst. I mean, some of the baked on stuff's on there still, but eh, maybe we'll let uh, we'll let one more soak. Okay, so now the intake's on, maybe slightly cleaner than before. Uh, pro tip: you can actually thread in some of these bottom bolts uh, for the exhaust. So if they're really hard to get to, what you do is you thread them in like maybe just the littlest bit, just enough for them to stay where they're at. Make sure that the washers are pushed all the way back on the bolt head. And what you can do is take the entire intake, push it against it, and drop it down a little to get behind it, and then push into the pins. So I had all three, well, three of the four bottom bolts, the second, third, and fourth underneath, pre-installed, and you can wiggle the intake on and actually get it to sit. Cool. So that makes that job a lot easier, because I absolutely hate trying to get to those bolts. Once the intake's on, you can't see shit, so <laughs> try to remember where they were at. So now that uh, we're here, put in the rest of the bolts, and we'll we'll get them mostly tight, and then we'll snug them in the uh, the torquing sequence uh, from the manual. Okay, so what the hell's my sock? The third bolt down here, the bottom row, third from the front. Real fun to get to. I'll show you how. You can actually see it if you're all the way over here. You can actually see the top of the bolt. Can't see it underneath, and. Uh, Trying to use a mirror, it's hard to get the angles right. So, I'll show you what worked for me. Give her the old Superman treatment. Ah, get in there. Right hand down, in between the intake and your brake lines. Left line to Left hand to support, and hold the socket wrench. So we've got a short socket on a proper impact swivel just to get around the damn intake tube. All right, I can see it, and left hand crank. Ah, feels like a stranger. Oh, get in there. Use the right hand to keep this extension from going all over the place. Oh, this is fun. Yeah. 25 foot pounds, huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah. More like 25 fuck you pounds, you piece of shit. Uh. Ooh, okay. And that's how you get to that bolt. Fuck. For reference, turn the light on. Jeez, that one. Right there, I think. Let's see if we got the center of the exhaust here. It's it's in one of these cracks. I think it's that one. Yeah, that one right there. Real wily bugger. So this will get you at least mostly tight, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the impact or the. Uh, the torque wrench on there to get her up to 25. That one's a real pain in the ass. And honestly, I don't even know if that was the the fourth one or the third one. I can't tell. <laughs> it's so difficult. You try to use a mirror, like one of these guys, and you do the old, you know, dentist routine. So you can see the, the one there. And then the one farther back. I might have been getting the one farther. I don't even know, dude. 
Uh, nevertheless, it's a pain in the ass, and this is going to take most of the time. So prepare to give yourself an extra 40 minutes of uh, cursing and uh, yoga class. Oh man, holy oh fuck. Okay, so you better hope that uh, you can get both hands in there. So, uh, I'd have one hand up this way, all the way under to get the bottom part of the bolt, but I couldn't twist it. I couldn't get my fingers around the bolt all the way, so then I had to take the right hand and go in through here and hit the other side of the bolt. And with both hands on there, I could work the bolt on there, but oh my goodness, what a pain in the butt. Okay, so once I got it on most of the way, then I could get my wonderful gear wrench in with the left hand and work on that. Now, at one point, I even tried one of these guys. They, they got a little nub in there so that they actually, it's kind of like a ratcheting open end wrench, which is really cool if it works, but I, I couldn't get enough throw on it to actually get it to, you know, click. So whatever. Okay, so I tightened it as much as I could with this, which is probably nothing. So hopefully, now that the bolt's all the way in there, we can actually get our stupid swivel to actually sit on there straight and torque it down the rest of the way. Jesus, man. Yeah, I still can't get uh, any amount of socketing into that area. So what I got is uh, the gear wrench. The gear wrench duct taped to another wrench to extend it. Try to get the torque because I just I can't get it any other way. So now you can drop it down, let it click. And snug her up. Make sure you only gotta do this one once. God damn. There you go, now the intake and exhaust are on and all the bolts are snugged up and beautiful. So, uh, I'm gonna pull the, um, I'm gonna pull the valve cover so that, uh, I can try to fix any oil leaks and see if I can fix a crack and all that kind of crap and we're just going for a whole overhaul right here, man. Screw it, you know? If we're gonna go, might as well go all the way. God damn, what a miserable job it is trying to get that rearmost bolt. But uh, it looks really clean in there. I was uh, impressed with that. That looks freaking brand spanking new, eh? Nothing wrong with that at all. That's cool. So I guess it looks like whatever oil I'm using and all that stuff's uh, doing a pretty good job. That looks gorgeous. Like, really, holy cow. That's nice, that's real nice. So anyway, I guess we'll try to clean up the uh, ceiling surfaces and clean this bastard up. Give her a little uh, touch up. See why the heck this uh, fancy medancy gasket is leaking. Hopefully, get that uh, figured out. There's that crack. You can see that thing all the way through. So, I wonder if our, uh, we can use something to fix that or not. to the top of that real well. So, yeah, it kind of blows. Hopefully we can do something about that. Okay, so, now that all this beautiful business is done, uh, I'm still waiting on the valve cover to dry, so we're just going to do some other small things. Put the power steering back, and uh, do some wiring. Uh, put the fuel lines in. Get the belt on. Stuff like that. Okay, so we're down below. I got the collector bolted up just a little. Uh, we're gonna need to use bigger washers than what they supplied. So, but you know, that might be a custom uh, collector thing or dinger, so whatever. Anyway, so step one to prevent um, new header cracks is an exhaust uh, flex plate. Oh, that looks cool as heck. Whoa. Uh, but yeah, this is going to go in here so that there is a little bit of wiggle room uh, to hopefully prevent the manifold from cracking again. I'm also going to see if I can maybe uh, go out and get longer bolts with uh, springs, because I hear springs do good things.
There's a little flex there too, you know? Everything needs to flex. So what we're gonna do is uh, cut out a big chunk here because uh, the crossover pipe seems like a good spot for that. And we'll put this in, we'll weld that up. And uh, yeah, it should be good as good as gold. Oh God. So this right here is a 10 inch flex pipe uh, that I got off Amazon. Um, I think. But what you have to remember is that you don't have to cut all the way to the end. The uh, inner diameter is big enough to slide over this. So we're going to cut up to like like where the, the flex part starts. So we'll cut that chunk out and then put it back together. Okay, so after some beating, some bending, and some cutting, I think we can finally say that that just about fits. It's off by a little bit, but there's not much I can do. I just, I can't get things to move around or bend around or have the clearances that I need. So, hopefully that'll seal. Now the nice thing is that the flex pipe right here is what's doing the bending. So all of that is just from the flex pipe, which is really cool. So even when we weld this up, if we get it off a little bit, we still got a little bit of movement. Beautiful. Alright, so, let's break out the welder. Okay, side one is welded, outside of the vehicle. Eh, it's passable. I didn't see any holes. Okay, so now for the fun part. Sliding that onto the vehicle, tacking it in a couple parts, and then I guess we'll have to drop the cross member. Ooh, my favorite part. And try to weld up the other end. Okay, so for the final bit of protection, I'm going to put some spring bolts in to replace our regular bolts, just in case the flex pipe isn't enough to save our header, along with the uh, extra support that we got going back here now keep this end up. So I went to the hardware store and got some big old, I think this is like a three inch bolt or something like that, and some leftover springs I had from when I had to work on the Cynic. So we're gonna pull those bolts out, put the spring bolts in, and the exhaust should be done. Hopefully it doesn't fart anymore either. Let's just do one final check. Everything is plugged in. We're a little low on power steering fluid. I'll have to go get some more. Belt's not touching anything, and it's tight. Okay. Everything's hooked up. All right. Well, we're gonna have to prime the pump a few times because the rail is gonna be completely dry. But what happens when we turn the key on? Anything blow up? Oh. Nothing blew up. Okay, ready to see if she starts? No surprise, but maybe a little gas will help. steering pump. Come on, you can do it. God, I don't even... Come on. Come on, you can do it. It's a good boy. Well, I don't think there's any major intake leaks, otherwise the uh, RPMs would be skyrocketing. Come on, you can do it. You can be a good boy. Come on. Go check on everything. Okay, so we should expect uh, stuff to burn off the exhaust. Oh, I saw something drip off of that. I wonder what that was. Okay. So look, you can actually see this stuff burning off the exhaust. That's kind of neat. Look at her go. Smokey the Bandit.
cool. And you can hear that slight exhaust from there, but I still gotta get proper spring bolts, so that's not tight anyway. Got an interesting note to it. Although, I wonder if it is leaking from the, uh, the head a little bit. I don't know. It does sound a little high. So I think with a clean air filter and some smooth flowing exhaust, holy crap, man, she goes. Let's see how we're doing down here. I don't feel any air leaks. Awesome, guess my shitty welding held up too. Not too shabby. Well, I guess I still know what I'm doing after all, huh? I'm gonna keep topping up this coolant, but I think that's uh, all you need to see for now. Okay, so our spring bolts are in place. I don't feel any air leaks around it, so I guess we're okay. I don't know. I still feel like it sounds like an exhaust leak somewhere. Uh, I hate exhaust, I really do. Kind of at the point where I don't care though. I really don't. Mmm, baby. Fuck it. It's good for me. Okay, so overall, what do we think? Not bad. You know, it's nice actually getting some uh, quality factory parts for once. Can't really see much up there. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the bank's torque tube. Their uh, pickle power really starts to show, you know, when you get on it and you first try that out. Dude, it has such a nice sound to it. Mm, it's got a beautiful rumble to it. Slight power increase, and it does run nice. So, yeah, if you're thinking about it and you only want to buy one, this is the way to do it. So, uh, yeah, this video has been kind of scattered, probably not super helpful, but there you go. That's how you put a torque tube on a Jeep Cherokee.